Hi, so, welcome to Tech Obsessed. Today I'm looking at a neat gadget I got from eBay for about 20 bucks called the Big 12864 LCD Transistor Tester Capacitance ESR Meter Diode Triode MOS NPN LCR, period. Um, there are hundreds of these things on, on eBay listed under different names for um, prices from 12 to 40 bucks. There, there are dozens of variations of the hardware, and most of them, if not all of them, are made in China. Most of them, if not all of them, are also descended from the same AVR transistor tester project by, um, I'm going to get this name wrong, but Marcus Fridjic, um, and there were further improvements by Karl Heinz Kubler. The project, I think, has been going on for I don't know, five, maybe even 10 years and, and continues to this day. The one I got came well packed uh, in a cardboard box. Inside the box, there's several layers of, um, of foam wrapped around a pouch. And it had a bubble wrap containing the device. This is probably the best packaging I've seen on any cheap electronics from eBay. So um, that in itself is kind of notable. I've already opened this up, but you can see how it came. There was a piece of protective film on the screen. Uh, you need a nine volt battery. And I'm not gonna do a full review on this because dozens of People have, have done who know more have done a much better job than I have. But I can at least show you the, the basics. You you hook up the battery, you turn it on, um, you know you get some information. It does a self test and it says you know it doesn't know what what's there because nothing there. So I have ripped apart some old compact fluorescent lights and uh, I have so I have a bag of components. I know basically what they are and I can often read the labels off of them, but I don't know if they're actually still performing the spec. So um, I can take component, plug it in, make sure that hit the test button and now it's doing the test and it's telling me that I have connected a capacitor with, um, and it gives me some relevant information like the voltage loss, the uh, important one, the capacitance, also the uh, resistance. And it's also, you know, picked up that it's connected between pins one and pins three, which it is. So how that works. And also test a bigger component. And there are a total of three pins there for testing, but then they're repeated multiple times. I think you can see it says one, two, three, three, one, two, three. And that's nice because it, you know, be, you can figure out something, a spacing that work with almost any component. So you know, this inductor is much larger and I'm, Sort of just popping it in there, turning it on, it's settled, turn it on, and bam. Here we go. And it's giving me the, the resistance and the capac uh, not the capacitance, the whatever, inductance of the inductor. Not bad. Um, now, if I'm quick about it, I can quickly get this in and hit the button, and it won't go through the, you know, won't show me the robot. <laughs> and so, what I've just stuck in there is a NPN transistor, power transistor, and you can see that it identifies the vice as a bipolar junction transistor NPN. Uh, it tells me what the, you know, how it's interpreting the pins, which are 
Well, pin one is a is the base. Pin two is the collector. Pin three is the emitter. It's also showing that diagrammatically there until it powered down to save the battery. <laughs> now, what's what's odd is, and you know shows um, all the other relevant metrics, uh, which honestly I don't call. I, I have to remind myself what they all mean. Um, of the, you know, obviously forward voltage. Now, if I turn this around, it should figure out the same thing. But I've noticed that at least this this one with these old things doesn't. Now it thinks this is a PNP with a totally different you know arrangement. Um, I don't know what the problem is. Uh, it could be that this thing is just fried. It could be, you know, I found it kind of an edge case. But given that this transistor was cooking in a contract fluorescent bulb for, you know, until the, some other component failed, um, you know, that's quite possible. So uh, I guess the other things to point out is that there are also uh, surfaces for um, surface mount transistors. Um, or devices that you can sort of slide and get across, you know, get get to touch the various pins and do a reading on that. So that's the basic operation. Um, if you want to know more, I'll put in links to um, better, you know, more informed reviews of the device. Now, I um, decided to record this because, you know, I there were some other things that are that I found interesting about this. First of all. Um, you know, I picked of you know the dozens of different variations on eBay. I picked this one because I was able to identify it um, because of sort of its size and other distinctive aspects of the listening, including this photo um, of of that I got of the back, which shows that um, you know this is the um, by Fish 8840, and you saw during the, the startup screen that they the, the, they actually have a Taobao URL where they sell these things if you're you know, if you're set up to make purchases in China, um, and then this is also dated uh, 2014 07, and you know so what I knew is that this was a pretty recent revision uh, of this hardware by a, a specific Chinese seller. And that was important because um, most of the, you know, as I think I mentioned earlier, most of these are now made in China um, by, you know, various small outfits, I think, making 200 or so at a time. And um, they are uh, not honoring the open source license. So they're making some modifications to the hardware and to the software and not releasing their updates. So you know, that's that's unfortunate. On the other hand, um, you know, it would take me longer and probably cost me more to put together, you know, to get a PCB and put made and to put one of these devices together on my own. So, you know, it's a, um, it's a mixed bag, but you know, so the bad thing is one, they're not viol you know, they're violating the license and that they're often they're often a release or more behind you know, the open source project. But um because I was able to get one that was, you know, sort of easily identifiable, um, I can take advantage of the fact that it's easy for me to find other people who have found out more details about the hardware, including bugs and and also perhaps reverse engineering the hardware and getting it to work with the open source software. So that's that's why I purchased this one. And um, I bought this in part because I'm interested in learning about electronics and, and Chinese manufacturing. I immediately noticed some interesting things about this. Um, you know, first of all, uh, we see that there are actually a bunch of unused pins here, um, which I'm pretty sure are, I think they're programming pins that can be probably maybe, you know, can be used to put new firmware on there. Um, Let's see, you know, other things I notice is that there are a bunch of, and this will be more obvious on the other side, there are a bunch of through-hole 
mounting point points that aren't being used. Um, so if we get in there and you know, it's a little easier if we take this apart, see some of the details. So I just pop this off. All right, and we can see that this display is also a Fish 8840, 8840 joint. Um, all right, so, you know, a few things. One thing that's pretty obvious is that this is quite simple. Um, there is, um, there aren't that many components. The main component is this uh, at Magal, at, a, sorry, Armel at Mega, um, what is that, a three, 328, I think. Same chip used on a lot of Arduinos. In addition to that, there's an 8 megahertz, an external 8 megahertz oscillator, and all of this stuff, or most of it, you know, the processor, all these capacitors, resistors, diodes, you know, are surface mount devices. There are only a few uh, through hole, uh, one of which is this, uh, is the crystal oscillator. The other of which is this, which is a, um, and I'll get the numbers off this and put it in, but this is a, a voltage regulator. And then there's some, you know, there are the, as I noted before, there are these unpopulated points. There's um, you know, something to solder on an external battery. We can see that actually the the leads for the 9 volt battery also look like they could also um, hold a um, a surface mount jack, well, yeah, a jack. There's something here which I haven't quite figured, you know, I haven't traced any of this out to, to figure out, but you know, there's obviously some sort of through hole jack or maybe a some sort of circuit or, you know, some sort of, um, not circuit, uh, some sort of maybe a control that went there. Then also I noticed that there's some capacitors here. So I, I, I don't know enough about electronics to know what to make of it, but I know a little, oh, and I, I'm missing one more thing. I also noticed that here are the connectors for this board, but it looks like, it looks like there are, at least these have been tinned but it should play the same role and might connect to um, allow an alternative display connection or something. And, and that's notable because they actually sell these with different size boards. Um, so, you know, it may that be that they also have a different configuration. So, what I don't know a lot about electronics, I know a little bit about, you know, just products. Um, and I've taken apart other hardware, and you notice that you know they uh, they all um, try to you know uh, when they're making a circuit board, for example, they they'll often have affordances that lets you make variations on the board, make it easier to to offer sort of different different models with slightly different features. So my guess is that that this was designed to be some product line optimization. You know, you might be able to get this with or without a crystal. I think, as I recall, this crystal allows, you know, improves the accuracy of some of the measurements that where timing is important. Um, a lot of this seems to be maybe about alternative ways of powering the device. Um, you know, I'm again, I'm not sure what this one's for, but you know, that's. That's my takeaway is that this is, you know, this is in some ways like a Western product in that uh, people are, are, are designing around um, being able to offer variations in the market and, and adapt to variation in supply. Uh, I noticed that this one has a crack. Uh, I don't know if I did that earlier or what. Anyway, that's my, uh, that's my quick look at this. Thanks.